two was uh, Japan India fiftieth um, year of Indo Japan uh, relationship. Yeah, one of my members said he has got he lived in fourteen years in Japan, mm -hmm. so he has got stamps of Japan. He would like to have an exhibition. So he announced the exhibition. Then when we try to reach him, he has already gone uh, um, out of uh, India to his uh, son's place in USA. So having announced, I have to get into it. So I just jumped in and started collecting the uh, Japanese stamps. That's how I got into this. And then it's very uh, interesting. And uh, from 2002, we have been doing this. Now, because of COVID last two years, we could not do it uh, uh, for people to come and visit us. So we had to do now online. This is the first year we are doing online after so many years. I mean, almost two, two years. Hmm. So when I saw your name, it reminded me when I first went to Japan, uh, my gemba was in near Kawasaki Tsurumi. Hmm. So I used to take yeah. the very old uh, train, Anzen Cho, was uh, the name of the station. So I used to take Anzen Sen and then uh, go there. So old wooden uh, compartments. That's in 1972. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David, I, I heard you talking about Zen. This is again a very, very interesting uh, topic. And uh, I talk a lot on uh, uh, when I talk about uh, Monozukuri and other things. I bring in some comparisons from Zen, which is applicable to anything and everything in life. It's a very interesting um, thing to study on Zen. See, I sometimes... You are, our office is in New Jersey, is it? Oh. ISJP. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, because I, I, I come to New Jersey sometimes. Because my best buddy is there in New Jersey. So he is in North Brunswick. So sometime uh, this year, I'm planning to visit you eh, to my daughter's place in Fremont. Then maybe I'll drop in in uh, ISJP too. Yep, that's that. where... Uh, that's where uh, Ken is, Ken Camholz. Oh, okay. That's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, he's our, he's our publisher. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a professor. Oh. Where in Rutgers? Morning, Rangasan. Morning, Leon son. Good morning, good morning. Wonderful, nice to see you here. <laughs> This is a very interesting uh, thing on uh, this uh, Okuno Ozomichi. Maybe this is one of the two series that has run for almost two years. Mm. Another one is the third uh, National Treasure of Japan. Mm. And this started uh, in the Showa era, ended in Showa era, and again continued in uh, Ese era. Okay. <laughs> so, the small piece of uh, paper stamp, oh, it tells you so many things in uh, this thing. It's a very interesting thing. Mm. Maybe uh, our Soryoji will also join us today, hopefully. Mm. Uh, last program, he was there. So now we are in YouTube live. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
this year uh, being uh, india japan uh, diplomatic relation 70th year both on the indian government side and japanese government side they have permitted special logo to be used for uh, people who apply for using this logo for the program today's program is one of them for which uh, we have obtained the permission from the japanese embassy in new delhi Why don't you pull up the chair card for me? Hmm. I've been to India a long, long time ago. Where were you in India? Yeah, but This yeah, long, long, uh, New Delhi and, and uh, yeah, of course. We are down south. Um, very just above sri lanka maybe we are within one minute one hour of flight from colombo oh we've been to sri lanka too oh yeah. that's a nice place oh, yeah. beautiful place yeah. i've been a number of times there yeah why don't you get a chair kyle <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah please yeah that would be better yeah you can't be standing for one hour Are you in Japan? No, he's in South India. South no, I am in South India. I went to Japan and way back in seventy-two, and I lived there for about five years. But I've been going back and forth to Japan. So you know, um, what yeah. do you pray? Kayoko, he's uh, presenting. Ah, uh, presenting. Yeah. Okay. Organizer. Yeah. Today. Uh, my my granddaughter is now from my family graduated from a japanese university and working there now oh excellent <laughs> one of these days i also want to present on forgeries of japanese stamps showing the original and some forgery What is the difference between forgery and fake? Right. What is forgery? Forgery means uh, you present something as real, but it's you have made a copy. Oh, I see. So it's not, for example, copying someone's signature or copying a painting and say, "Oh, this is an original Picasso," but it's not. That's a forgery. Ah, good forgery. And many people also make um, forged uh, currencies in different countries. Right. If if you want to spoil enemy country's uh, economy, all that you do is put in the country's currency and just throw throw them into that uh, market. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the uh, uh, early Japanese forgeries were really not meant to. Uh, 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 get money from the post office, but they were uh, sold on tourist sheets as uh, copies uh, for yeah. uh, tourists that were visiting Japan. Oh, yeah, especially the Dragon series, I think, was one of the most copied. But uh, after uh, Penny Black, mm This time I bought some forgeries because he has announced their forgeries. I wanted to show how does the original look, how does the forgery look, <laughs> how what you should watch out. You know that's one of my. I mean, of course, Japanese stamps only I want to show. And when they forge, they don't forge normal stamps. They forge only the most expensive stamps. Of course, of course. <laughs> Things like ukiyo-e, you know, yeah. So I have a friend who has a good ukiyo-e, but I'm not sure. You know, it's If real. It's real or not? Yeah. <laughs> the rich American, so probably. <laughs> one minute more. Yes, Bhopal. One minute, sir. One minute. Okay, we'll start. One minute. Okay. <laughs> in many of the early stamps that you see in Japan on e on eBay are forgeries, and the seller. 
doesn't always acknowledge them as forgeries. So you have to be careful. Yeah, really very careful. So you know how to... He's presenting. No, nobody can say, okay, I'm the master who can find out between forgery and this. That's why we all get cheated sometimes. I've also got cheated sometimes. Okay. I'll be right back. Come here. Turn that off. I'm still watching. What about can you start? All right. Good morning, friends. I'm Ranganathan from Chennai. I'm very happy to welcome our friends who have joined us today from the US, from the India, uh, International Society for Japanese Philately. So I'm very happy to today share uh, my talk on Okuno Ozomichi of uh, the Deep North uh, trip that, uh, Deep North trip mostly on foot taken by Matsuo Basho at a very, very old age. And uh, this year happens to be the 70th year of uh, Japan-India relationship. So uh, we have been doing this, uh, presenting the stamp from the 50th year of Japan-India relationship. And uh, this being the 70th year, there is a special logo that has been approved, both by the Japanese government and Indian government. You all can see the logo approved by the Japanese embassy in India and we applied for that, we have to apply and they have permitted us to use this. On the right you can see the famous uh, poet Basho, who is supposed to be one of the uh, four masters of haiku in Japan. So let's go into Okono Osomichi because we need to take a long walk with him. Okono Osomichi if translated as a narrow road to deep north or the narrow road to the interior, is a major work in Haibun, Haibun a Japanese, by a Japanese poet Matsuo Basho, considered to be one of the major texts of Japanese literature in Edo period. As you know, Edo period is for almost 200 years when Japan is closest. Uh, um, but close to outdoor, people were not permitted to go out or others were not uh, permitted to come in till uh, Gamoda Perry came and negotiated uh, with the uh, force and Japan opened the door, then the Meiji restoration come. So at that point of Edo period, there were a lot of literature, arts, everything boom. The 200 years of isolation allowed uh, Japan to become an excellent uh, country in arts, finance, and everything, you know, that's a time when you had the ukiyo-e coming up, the kabuki, and no, everything came up at that period. The first edition of Okuno Omichi was published in 1702. By the time uh, Sensei Basho was already uh, was not with us anymore. What is Haibun is a symmetric uh, literary from originating from them. It combines prose and haiku. You all know I will talk about a little or haiku a little later. This small piece of uh, stamp opens our eyes into so many things which I will show you today. The range of haibun is broad and frequently includes autobiography, diary, essay, prose, poem, short story, and travel journal. So many things are into That's a style of uh, haibun. Yeah. Prosimetric is a poetic composition of what exploits combination of prose and verse in a particular form. It is a text composed of altering segments of prose and verse. That is the style in which uh, Okuno Osomichi has been written by Sensei. The narrow road to deep north, then accorded by Japanese master Basho. The poetic traveler, considered to be the greatest works of a classic Japanese literature, was begun in 1689 
think of so many years before when Japan did not have so much of good transport, everything. And Basho sold his home outside Edo and took up this travel on foot to remote northern provinces of Japan. Five months of the journey, described in excellent prose and combination, intimates of his journey with a historical background, uh, anecdotes, fictional, literary allusions, and his own emotional responses, is often expressed in a way in I. Basho clearly seeks spiritual enlightenment and reaffirmation of values that he feels have been lost in the era of shoguns, that is the Edo period. Okay. Traditional Japanese haiku consists of three phrases that combine a kireji, a cutting word, 17 own phonetic unit similar to syllabus in 575 pattern, and a kigo is something which has got a seasonal reference in the haiku. Now, at that point of time, there were four haiku masters in Japan called as the Great Four, Matsuo Basho, Kobayashi Isa. Uh, Kobayashi Isa normally used to write mostly about the weaklings, like he will talk about grasshoppers, he will talk about snails, he will talk about uh, fish. So that's a style of Kobayashi Isha Sensei's um, uh, haikus. Then we had the Masaoka Shiki. Uh, Shiki has also been, uh, you can see there is a stamp of uh, Shiki down below. That is at the great cultural leaders of Japan. This stamp that we'll talk about it next week. And then last is the uh, Yosa Busan. Now, if you look at the down below, that is Matsubasho stamp is there. And uh, Isha has written a great uh, poem, Skinny Frog, Don't Give Up. He says, Skinny Frog, Don't Give Up, Isa is here. That is a very famous poem. A Japanese post also commemorated this with a stamp, but I could not get a copy of the stamp. But that's a picture I think is the stamp. And then Shiki was, uh, Shiki's uh, haiku has also been brought in a Japanese stamp, which is shown there. Now, Yosobo san has been a very good artist apart from haiku master, and his artwork has come in a stamp in Japan in the International Letter Writing Week. Apart from that, the small country Nevis has brought a stamp on Buzon's art in 2002. So that's where they're all in some way in the, the philatelic word. And again, haiku depends on the creative power of the reader who must learn to bridge the gap between the images and deeper meaning. Because uh, haiku does not give you, like many poetry, uh, does not uh, give you direct meaning. You read the poem, haiku, and... Uh, Look at the meaning uh, by your own uh, creativity, innovation, and understanding the culture of it. A good haiku often consists of two statements or images. They are contrasting statements. The creative reader can learn how to put them together. Remarkably, each image is often defined in terms of the other. Now, I'm giving you a small haiku by uh, Sensei Basho here from the narrow road of uh, Okono Osomichi. Shizukasa ya iwa ni shimuru iru semi no koe. Such stillness. The cries of the cicadas. Cicado is semi, which is normally uh, cicado that comes up in the summer in Japan. And that sinks into the rock. That's what the, Now you can uh, look at uh, the beauty of this haiku and understand. For lovers of haiku, Basho's narrow road to deep north is most moving and accomplished achievement. Never published during his lifetime, this travel journal has become a true classic of Japanese literature. Now, this is what uh, Basho writes when he takes up this uh, Okono Osomuchi. The months and days are travelers of eternity. The years that come and go are voyages. Those who float away their lives on ships, who grow old, leading horses, are forever journey. Their homes are wherever they travel, the travel takes them. Many of them, many of the men all died on the road. And I too for years past have been stirred by the sight of solitary cloud drifting with wind to ceaseless thoughts of Murumi. Last year, I spent wandering along the sea coast. In Atom, I returned to my cottage on the river swept away by the, swept away the cobwebs. You see, there's a small cottage on the riverside uh, this is uh, yeah, Okio, a painting of Scottish by 
the great uh, master, one of the masters of the thing, Horish Ireshige. And gradually, the year drew to close. When spring came and there was mist in the air, I thought of crossing the barrier of Shirakawa to go into Oku. That's what uh, Basha wrote. And he said, I seem to be possessed by the spirits of wanderlust. They all but deprived me of my senses. The guardian spirits of the road beckoned. I could not settle down to work. I passed my torn trousers and changed my card of my bamboo hut. I could link, I, I could think nothing but the moon of Matsushima. This is one of the pictures of the moon in Matsushima. Uh, Shima, as you know, is an island. Matsushima is an island there. When I sold my cottage, he sold his cottage and moved into Sampu's villa. I stayed until I started my journey. That's how Basha's uh, Okuno Osomichi travel started. Okuno Osomichi was written based on the journey undertaken by him. He and his traveling companion, Kawai, Sora Kawai, departed from Edo, that's Tokyo, to northern interior region known as Oku. <coughs> because of a desire to see the places about which old poets are written and to renew his own art. He was, uh, there was a poet by name Saigyo. Saigyo is supposed to be one of the great masters and uh, he was a uh, great uh, master of waka, one, pa, one, one way, one, one of the styles of uh, Japanese poems. He was a great waka poet and uh, he made a point to visit all the sites mentioned in his uh, verses. Though traveling in those days was dangerous, Basho was committed to a kind of poetic wandering. Altogether, he traveled for 156 days, which is, you know, how many years, and uh, uh, mostly on foot, almost five months, half, half a year, uh, covering 1,500 miles. In 1987, February 26, Japan Post released the first set and continued this up to 12th May 1989. Japan Post issued a series of set and pair. There is two stamps together, set and pair of stamps, and so many sheets commemorating a third 300th year of the trip of Okono Osomichi. A complete haiku is inscribed vertically on the right hand side and on the left hand side stamps. There are verses and central in the right hand side stamp. Though the tradition form of loss in English translation, the uh, flavor of each poem is retained in translation. Okuno Osomichi series started on 26 February 87, which is the Showa era uh, 62, because I'm talking about Showa era, because the stamp, uh, when they are stamped, you can see them stamped with 62, though we are talking about 1987, and ended when the series one, uh, the series one was started in Showa 62, ended in the year Showa 64. Series eight and nine were issued in Heisei era, which started on a Sunday, January 8, 1989, as the Shoah Emperor passed away on the January 7, 1989. Uh, National Treasure Series 3 is another series like this series, which was started in Shoah era and ended in Asa era. Kindly, I am going to present some of the information sheets, uh, which have also been stamped on the first day, on the next slide. And there is a red circle on the information sheet given the Japanese era and also indicated the Gregorian era inside the red rectangle. Let's go into the next slide. Now, if you look at it, this has got a um, number of things in this. What you have is information sheet. Normally, the information sheet is given by the Japanese post office when they give this sort of series. So somebody, bought, this is given free along with your uh, package that you buy. They don't charge you. But somebody bought this, uh, when they bought the stamp and the souvenir sheet, he got the information. He pasted the stamps and got a, a first day release. This was released on 26 February, 62. 62 is 1987, that's what I've indicated. And this is a souvenir sheet. And I talked about the set and pair of stamps, two stamps together, they are there. Now, this 62 is equal to 1987. Uh, the information sheet talks about uh, what is in the sheet and the beautiful certain uh, pair of uh, 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 stamps and the souvenir sheet are really what was the thing. If you look at this, now this set of stamps on the left, it says there is a haiku there. Uh, somebody has uh, taken pains 
uh, Donnelly, I think his name is, uh, yeah, I'll show it. The spring departs, birds cry, the fish's eyes are filled with tears. Uh, that's a haiku, it's there, which is uh, equal and translation, uh, made in English. Spring departs, birds cry, the fish's eyes are filled with tears. On the right hand side in the Saturnian pair, it is with awe uh, that I behold fresh leaves, green leaves, bright in sun. This is as he travels, you see, uh, and then he writes about this. And then this is uh, released again, uh, the second uh, series. If you see 62, 23rd June, it was released on 23rd uh, June. And then this says, Turn the head of your horse sidewards across the field to let me hear the cry of the cuckoo. On the right hand side of the settlement uh, thing, says, when the girls have planted the square paddy field, I stepped out of the shade of my willow tree. You see, it's a contrasting thing in all the things. There are two things. Somebody pres- uh, uh, planting in the field, uh, paddy field and he's stepping out of the willow tree. How do you connect uh, maybe I'm not a great expert in haiku. I'm also not a great expert in uh, philately or uh, this. But still, I'm a passionate about philately. I thought I would share what I've gathered and uh, my little amount of knowledge with all of you. And then the third one is the series. This again, you can see, was released on August 26th. And uh, in everything, I put a, a travel picture of uh, Sensei Basho which is the uh, accompanying uh, person, uh, Sora. Now, this says, the chestnut by the eaves, uh, chestnut by the eaves, in magnificent bloom, passes unnoticed by the men of the world, the men of the world, he says, okay, people are all busy doing their own thing, they have no time to look at this uh, thing. Then the next uh, thing is, busy hands of planting maids. Reminiscent some more of the old dyeing technique. Um, dyeing techniques, again, uh, needed a lot of people to get passionately involved. So it talks about dyeing techniques, which is comparing with the uh, hands of the planting mates. Maybe there may be some more deeper meaning on the haiku, but I'm trying to bring in what the stamp, the haiku in the stamp says, uh, equivalent uh, in English. Now, the fourth one is, now if you see this, Last two, they showed 62. Now this stamping has changed to 63. That means we have moved from 1987 to 1982, uh, 1988. Uh, so this information sheet, along with the Saturn and stamp and the uh, souvenir sheets, and the information sheet shows you the first day of stamping, that is in the month of uh, June and 88. Now, it says, it looks as if, Iris flowers have blossomed, have bloomed on my feet, sandals laced in blue. So with iris flowers on his feet, the sandals they look laced with blue. The iris flower is beautifully written there. And the thicket of summer grass is all that remains of the dreams and ambitions of ancient warriors. So he's comparing the summer grass to the ticket of summer, to the ancient warriors' dreams and ambitions. Now the fourth one is again 63, and then this Okono Somichi 4, series 4, if you look at this, with powder brush, with a powder brush before my eyes, I stole among the uh, row plants. I have no idea what the, uh, I, I someday, intend to sit with this and uh, read them in more uh, in detail. In the utter silence of a temple, the cicado's voice alone penetrates the rocks. The temples are made of rocks. It's absolutely silent. Cicada is what you see this summer, uh, the semi. The semi is always making noise during the summer. Uh, many children have a passion to collect uh, semi just uh, as a pet. Okay, And then the cicada's voice alone Penetrates the rocks of the temple. Now, that's Maso Basha on the right. Very beautiful uh, image of him drawn. This is again in the month of May 30th. Now, gathering all the rains of May, the river Mugomi rushes down 
in a violent stream. On the right hand side, it says, Blessed indeed is this south valley where the gentle wind breathes the faint aroma of snow. Okay, aroma of snow is breathed uh, in the south valley. Okay, the next one is again in the uh, year 1988, uh, in the month of uh, August 23rd, it talks about a flowering silk tree in the sleepy rain of Kisagata. That's one of the places uh, uh, he has uh, traveled and reached. Reminds me of the lady Seishi in Sorrowful Lament. Look at this. Uh, the sleepy rain in Kisagata and the uh, silky tree that flowers. He contrasts it with the sorrowful lemon of uh, Lady Seishi. I, uh, I mean, very beautiful way of expressing things. The great milky way spans in a single arch the, below the crested sea falling on Sado beyond. Yes, again, the translation, I really don't know. Then 63, November 11 is uh, this one. This is a series eight. I walked into the fumes of early reaping rice. On the right below me, the waters of the angry sea. And on the right hand side, Saturn and Sam, he says, red, red is the sun, heartlessly indifferent to time. The wind knows how the promise of an early chill. Hot summer, and then the sun is very red. Japanese summers are also equally hot. And then there is a beautiful um, wind blows in the morning with the early chill. He compares them. Uh, this is the ninth uh, series of things. Now, if you see, it says one. 1989, 1988, Emperor Showa passes away on the 7th January, Saturday, and 8th January, Sunday, 1989. The new era starts, the uh, Ace era, okay? The emperor was now abdicated for the uh, Reva emperor now. now oh, that's why the, era, the year again starts. So 63 suddenly becomes one. I want you to notice that, something that we learned from this uh, uh, stamping that has been there. And then, it says this is a ninth series, uh, whiter far than white rocks of the rock temple, the atom wind loose. The moon was bright and divine pure upon the sand brought by Bishop Yogo. I'm lost in this, okay. That's his uh, Basho's uh, uh, statue. Okay. Now there's a 10th one. That is on the 12th of May, January, that you can see this. Now, the, as firmly cemented calm shells fall, fall apart in the atom, so I must take the road again. Farewell, my friends. He again wants to, Basho wants to travel. Lonier, I thought, than the Suma beach, the closing of the atom on the sea before me. Now, this is... Uh, the information sheet, the stamps, and the souvenir sheet. And then the meaning of uh, the haikus there. Now, these are what you call as the first day covers. Now, the interesting thing about this first day covers, I'll explain you at the end of this, but kindly look at this first day covers. Uh, there are two stamps there, okay? And then uh, if you look at the first stamp, the set in a pair of stamps that were issued on February. But both the stamps have a first day cover. It was cancelled in the post office in Kyoto. The stamp is Vermilion says it is a series one of Okono Usomichi, first day, 26 February, sent to Japan by airmail. Now, this is sent on August 12th, some other day. So that day, the post office is stamped in. And uh, there's a uh, Basho's uh, figure there. And one of his uh, stamps, beautiful picture has been painted here. Show it's a first day cover of series one. And uh, uh, the stamps can be, you, you can take a first day cover. There are a number of 
different designs of first day covers are being sold. You go to the post office. The post office also sells its own first day covers, or you can buy a first day cover, buy the stamp, paste it there, and go on that day to the post office. They will do that day stamping. So on that day, you go to the post office on the day of the release of the stamp. You can go and they will stamp with that day stamp. So that is the speciality of the first day. And the first day cover, when it is also posted some other country, and then later on it is collected. It is supposed to be having some value. I don't know what value, but now if you look at the second day stamp, okay, this is uh, again, it's uh, not uh, done in the same. The first day stamp was at uh, the post office in Kyoto. Now it is in uh, Kurioso in Tochigi Prefecture. The, again, it says this is the second series, and it is on 23rd June. You can see the post office uh, stamp, 23rd uh, uh, June, uh, this cover was uh, the uh, cover was sent on a different day, but it is 23rd June. You can see on the Vermilion stamp from Kurisoto from the same post office. They've been sent on 87 8th uh, month, 12th day. It has been posted to somebody in Germany. Now, certain pair of stamps are issued on August 25th. A again, this is not from the post office, it's gone, the, it has been done in Kyoto. Okay, so the reason why I'm talking about this post office is, I'll show it a little later. And then the last pair, uh, the fourth pair of stamp is post collected. And on the first day, the stamp from Sendai. And then if you look at uh, the designs that you have on the uh, first day covers, they're relevant to what we are talking about. Okay, they don't put a butterfly and then give a first day, but connected to Basho's Okono Osomichi is what they have been made. And the Sendai stamp is there, post office stamp is there. And then uh, the second pair of stamps are issued on August 12th, 1988. And uh, Obanasawa, now the uh, travel sometimes in the Japanese, there are phonetic changes. Obanasawa can also be pronounce uh, depending on the place, Ubona Zawa. Uh, there's a place at uh, up north in Yamagata. Okay. Uh, very interestingly, uh, I have a friend, uh, a very close Japanese friend who speaks excellent English from those days in 1972, he became my friend. While he was traveling, he's from Kyushu, uh, from Kumamoto. Then he met a girl from uh, Awamori. She's from uh, north. He's from down south. They fell in love, they married. Uh, many, day, many days he used to jocularly say uh, that he was an interpreter between his wife and his parents. So there's so much of uh, uh, regional variation when they speak the Japanese language. So if you see some of the things, it is written as Obana Sawa, not Obana Sawa. Uh, this is Obana Sawa post office where it has been uh, cancelled on the day one. Now, this is a place called Oshida at Yamagata. This is on August 12th, 1988. This is cancelled. That means somebody has gone to that. You cannot be sitting in Tokyo and getting the uh, stamp at Oshida on, uh, on that day of the stamp release, first day release. Uh, maybe you have to be there in person to get the stamp uh, stamped. Or you may have a friend of yours get it done for you and send it back to you. Okay. Now, this is Kisakita in Akita. Uh, this is where uh, um, uh, Apnar uh, is a, uh, it's a very beautiful place. They've got a lot of wonderful festivals, which are culturally very, very important for bringing the uh, community together. Uh, it's not the religiously together, but the community comes together with a single mind of exhibiting one, the oneness in the society. So that's a very beautiful place, Hakita, Sendai, all of them. Um, I, the summer festivals are very well known. You can see a huge crowd. People from all over the world, they come to see these uh, festivals. Now, uh, the next one has been stamped in uh, uh, Karasawa in the Ishikawa prefecture. This is on the number 11th, 1988. Uh, that is cancelled. It is the See, now if you see, uh, that's a number 80. So after that, it has to move to 89. So this is the 
first stamp in uh, number 89 on the February 13th. This has been done in a place called Suruga in Fukui. That is a post office where the first day cancellation has been uh, done for the stamp. Now, the last one, the 10th in the series, has been stamped in a place called Ogaki in Gifu. Okay. Uh, now, why should I talk about all these post offices? I'll show you now. Another two first day covers. Um, additionally, I got one on the series five and one on the series nine, because not necessarily just to show that in the uh, uh, series five, you only see a second and pair, but you have got more than one pair and also a single sheet. And uh, all, all of them have been uh, stamped on the first day. They were issued, they were the first day covers. Um, if you see, these are the places where uh, Sensei Basho traveled. Okay? And these are places that uh, he has gone by walk. Some days, maybe on a horseback, but uh, two of them went. And if you look at the names of places, almost all the post office where the first day cancellations have been done are all here. So somebody has made sure that he takes a stamp, goes to the post office, though there are 44, 43, uh, out of which uh, it starts only from uh, 3 to 43, that's about 40 places. But actually, if you really uh, look at that, we have done only 10 stamps. So out of that, wherever he could go, he has gone and collected the first day cancellation in the 10 places. So the first day covers that I presented now. And thank you for your presence today. I'm sorry it's over in half an hour, but I want to bring the various aspects of the Japanese travel. Uh, anybody has got any questions, I'm willing to answer. Thank you.